Part 3, Age-Related Flexibility Decline and Flexibility Training Across the Lifespan. As men and women age, flexibility tends to decline, leading to reduced mobility, increased risk of injury, and limitations in performing daily activities. In Part 3 of this essay, we will examine the biological processes responsible for related decreases in flexibility, how this affects men and women differently, and strategies for maintaining flexibility throughout life. Additionally, we will explore how flexibility training can be adapted for different life stages, from youth to older adulthood, emphasizing the importance of maintaining range of motion as part of an overall fitness regimen. Biological factors in age-related flexibility decline. Flexibility loss with age is a result of multiple factors, including changes in connective tissue structure, muscle composition, and joint health. These biological changes affect men and women differently, but the general trend is a steady decline in flexibility starting in middle age and accelerating in later life. 1. Changes in connective tissue. As we age, connective tissues such as tendons, ligaments, and fascia become less elastic and more prone to stiffness. This is due to an increase in collagen cross-linking within the tissues, which reduces their ability to stretch and return to their original shape. Collagen fibers become thicker and less flexible, making movements more restricted. Both men and women experience this decline, but women tend to maintain flexibility longer due to higher levels of estrogen, which preserves connective tissue elasticity. However, after menopause, women experience a more rapid decrease in flexibility as estrogen levels drop, accelerating the loss of collagen elasticity. 2. Loss of muscle mass and strength. Muscle mass naturally declines with age, a process known as sarcopenia. This loss of muscle tissue affects flexibility because muscles play a key role in supporting joint movement and maintaining range of motion. Reduced muscle mass contributes to joint stiffness and decreased flexibility. Sarcopenia is more pronounced in men due to higher baseline levels of muscle mass. As men lose muscle, the additional tension around joints created by the shrinking muscles can further limit flexibility. Women, with less muscle mass to begin with, tend to experience less pronounced sarcopenia, but still face flexibility challenges related to reduced muscle strength and endurance. 3. Joint degeneration and mobility. Aging also leads to degeneration of joint structures, including cartilage wear, reduced synovial fluid production, and the onset of conditions like osteoarthritis. These changes contribute to decreased joint mobility and can limit flexibility, particularly in weight-bearing joints such as the hips, knees, and spine. Osteoarthritis is a common issue that disproportionately affects older adults, leading to pain, stiffness, and reduced flexibility. While both men and women are susceptible, postmenopausal women are at higher risk due to the loss of protective estrogen, which helps maintain joint health. Number four, nerve function decline. Nerve conduction velocity decreases with age, impacting the neuromuscular system's ability to control movement and flexibility. Slower nerve responses can lead to reduced proprioception, the body's sense of movement, and delayed muscle relaxation during stretching, further limiting flexibility. Both men and women experience this decline, but it may be more pronounced in men due to their generally higher muscle mass and stronger stretch reflex response which can exacerbate stiffness and restrict move flexibility. Differences in aging men and women. Although both sexes experience declines in flexibility with age, the trajectory of this decline and the contributing factors differ. Understanding these sex-specific differences is important for tailoring flexibility training programs for older adults. One, women's flexibility in aging. Women generally maintain greater flexibility than men throughout life even into older age. However, the hormonal changes associated with menopause significantly impact their flexibility. The drop in estrogen levels post-menopause accelerates the loss of connective tissue elasticity, which can lead to joint stiffness and a decrease in range of motion. Women's higher baseline flexibility, especially in the hips and lower back, tends to protect against severe mobility limitations, but they are more prone to joint laxity and conditions such as osteoporosis, which can affect flexibility. Postmenopausal women may need to emphasize joint stabilization exercises in their flexibility training to prevent injury. Two, men's flexibility in aging. 
Men tend to lose flexibility and more rapidly than women, particularly due to the combined effects of sarcopenia, joint stiffness, and reduced connective tissue elasticity. Men's flexibility declines are most noticeable in the hamstrings, lower back, and shoulders, which can limit mobility and increase the risk of injury. The earlier and more rapid decline in flexibility for men emphasizes the importance of early intervention through consistent flexibility and mobility training to mitigate the effects of aging. Men benefit from combining flexibility work with strength training to prevent stiffness and maintain joint health. Flexibility training across the lifespan. Flexibility training should be an integral part of fitness at every stage of life. However, as we age, the goals and methods of flexibility training must adapt to the body's changing needs. This section outlines effective flexibility strategies for youth, middle age, and older adulthood, addressing how to maintain or even improve flexibility across the lifespan. One, flexibility training for youth, adolescence, and early adulthood. In youth, flexibility is generally at its peak with pliable muscles and joints that allow for wide ranges of motion. However, this is also the ideal time to establish good stretching habits that will carry through to later life. Dynamic stretching is particularly effective for younger individuals, especially before athletic activities. Static stretching post-exercise helps maintain the flexibility gained during sports or physical activity. Since youth are less prone to injury due to flexibility, they can focus on enhancing their range of motion through active flexibility drills, yoga, or sports-specific stretching. Two, flexibility training in middle age, 30s to 50s, during middle age, flexibility begins to decline, and lifestyle factors such as sedentary work or reduced physical activity can exacerbate this loss. Flexibility training during this period should focus on maintaining mobility in key areas, particularly the hips, lower back, and shoulders. Combining flexibility with mobility training, such as incorporating yoga, Pilates, or dynamic stretching routines into daily exercise can help counteract the age-related decline. Strengthening the muscles that support flexible joints is also critical to prevent injury and maintain joint health. It's important to address any specific flexibility limitations, such as tight hamstrings or stiff shoulders, through targeted stretching routines. Regular flexibility assessments can help identify areas that need additional attention to prevent stiffness and maintain range of motion. Three, flexibility training for older adults, 60 plus years. In older adulthood, Flexibility training becomes essential for maintaining independence, mobility, and quality of life. Flexibility declines more rapidly at this stage, but regular stretching can slow this process and help prevent issues like falls and joint degeneration.